G'day! As you can see, we are in a different location today. In fact, we are in my car. That is because we are starting off this video with a little bit of a road trip to the op shop. The reason behind this is because I have had a number of comments about, oh, well, costuming is so hard to get into, and oh, you know, I don't really know how to do it, and ah, it's so expensive. Well, today I want to prove that all wrong. In fact, I'm wanting to do something that I actually haven't had all that much experience in, and that is historical costuming. Lady Rebecca Fashions said in her video that the easiest era to start off in is the Regency period. So today I'm going to make a Regency dress and I thought I'd take you along with me to get some cheap material and then to make a dress. And we'll see how it all turns out. So come with. Woo! Road trip! So we've just arrived at the op shop and I thought I'd quickly tell you what I'm going to be looking for. I'm going to be looking for ideally like a quilt cover or failing that some sheets and some pillowcases. And they should either be a very light blue or a green or a white or ideally with a very small flower print on it. So I'm hoping I can find something like that. Um, I'm going to go into this big, uh, what is it, Salvo store first, then there's Vinnie's and then there's Good Sammy's down there. and if all else fails is uh, the save the children op shop across the road so I've got a few options here hopefully I can find something so come with come with yes That might work. I'm not just, oh, it's got buttons as well. So, here is my fabric. So for my main fabric, I ended up getting this quilt. It's a really, really pretty kind of damask kind of quilting. Ideally, I would have liked it if it was all natural fibers. However, I'm pretty sure this is synthetic. But I really, really like the pattern. I think it is quite on brand for the Regency period. Uh, so I was very, very happy with this find and I just could not pass it up. As soon as I saw it and it was like one of the first things I saw, I was like, this is what I'm going to be making it out of. The only issue that I have is that for the quilt cover, it is only one sided. The other side is a cotton, which means that it may be a bit tricky to get all the dress out of one side of this quilt but we will see what we can come up with the cotton however i plan on using as lining for the bodice and maybe even portion portion of the skirt we'll just see how that goes but what i also really like about this quilt is that the closures were actually buttons which means that i can use the buttons in the back of the dress for the closure there's also this rope trim which is interesting i don't know if i'm going to be able to use it but it'd be cool if i could incorporate it and this quilt came to a whopping $15 Australian. What a bargain. Along with the quilt, I also got two gold pillowcases, which has a similar gold that is found in some of the flex within the quilt. I thought it would pair nicely and I might make this into a sash. The two pillowcases together cost me a whopping $3. So all up, the fabric and the notions for this project has come to a whopping $18 Australian. <sighs> Let's see what I can do with it. To help me out, I also have this pattern, which I had in my stash. For a dress like this, it recommends three and a half meters of 115 centimeter wide fabric. Now, I'm not sure what that equates to for this quilt cover, but I'm guessing that I probably have not as much as the pattern asks for in the pretty kind of quilt cover fabric. So I'm going to have to do a bit of, shall we say, creative cutting and sewing. 
This pattern also asks for the closure to be in buttons, which I like because there's buttons on that quilt cover and also, you know, it's more historically accurate than zips. So the next stage will be ripping the quilt cover and the two pillowcases into pieces so I know how much I'm actually working with. Then I'm going to cut out my pattern pieces and lay them all out. But first, let's get into something more comfy, shall we? Ah, that's much better. So here we are, the fabric has now been split. Uh, so here are the pillowcases. There are four pieces in squares. They're about a meter by meter. So that should work well for the sash that I'm gonna create. I'll spend a bit of time working on that. And then on this one, we've got the main fabric. Now I was concerned I didn't have enough. I'm still a little concerned I don't have enough, but this measures out to be about two meters by two and a half meters. So that's great. Uh, there was seven, plastic buttons uh, that I'm going to use for the closures uh, or closure should I say however you know it's a bit sad that it is plastic um, because obviously that's not historically accurate but you know what we're going with it because it was what was on the actual garment the other thing is is that both the pillowcases and also the quilt had like a rope around the edge and this is really interesting so this is just a rope with nothing to attach it to the fabric it was actually sewn just straight through the middle of the rope with this one it, it can be used a little bit um, like piping I suppose so I may very well use this along the neckline maybe and I don't know if I'll be using this so we'll just see I mean there's a lot here that I can work with and that's what I'm getting across here there's a lot that we can work with here so I'm excited and now let's uh, get the pattern out the first thing I did was identify the pattern pieces that I needed and then cut them out. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually going to fold the paper pattern so that it's in my size. That way, if I ever gain weight or I need to reuse this pattern in a larger size later, uh, then I don't have to try and guess what I cut off. Fun little thing to do. Then it was time to pin and cut the fabric. So what I've done here is that I've laid my pattern pieces out on a single layer. And that's because what I'm going to be doing is I'm actually going to cut around these and then use the placement of the pattern on the actual pattern of the fabric later on with the leftovers to create the other side. That way, it's symmetrical. I also took the time to cut out the lining layer and the sash pieces. So what I'm doing is I'm wrapping this gold fabric, which I'll be using for the sash and for the arm cuffs, around this rope braid from the gold cushions. Basically I'm doing this so that I'm creating a piping effect because rope wasn't really used as a trim in the Regency period. Funny that. So I now have all my pieces cut out, uh, all of the main fabric pieces for the dress are cut out of this lovely quilt cover and then I've got my accent pieces cut out of this gold. So that's all good. What I'm going to do next is I'm actually going to overlock a whole lot of these edges because it does seem like this especially is prone to fraying. So I'm going to get that all hooked up and done and uh, then we will start constructing it together. Right. 
So what we're going to do now is I'm actually going to use my overlocker here to overlock the edges of especially the skirt panels, but I've also done the bodice panels of the quilt fabric, and that's because it frays a bit. This is going to be very com common for any kind of fabric that has a weave to it, especially those of natural fibers. So this is actually a natural synthetic blend fiber I found out by the tag. So I'm going to chuck this through the machine now. If you don't have an overlocker though, and you see that your fabric is fraying though, do some best practice here. Get your sewing machine, put it on a zigzag stitch and go around the edges. That will help the, stop the fraying a fair bit. So let's do it now. Okay, so now that I've overlocked all the edges, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start by pinning this all together and then I'm gonna sew it all together. It's not too complicated. There's only, I think, five total pieces for the bodice piece, two pieces for the skirt piece, and then the sleeves. So it's it's not complicated. We're just gonna do one section at a time. I like to do the bodice first, then attach the skirt, and then finally the sleeves. That's my personal preference. I haven't even looked at the instructions of, of the pattern itself, but you know what? Patterns, pattern instructions, you know, sometimes you can do your own thing, but if you do get stuck, I do recommend that you read through the pattern instructions first and go from there. So let's get started on this. But before I did that, I thought it would be good to make up the sash as it was super straightforward. Sew the pieces into a tube and then turn it right side out. thing to have when trying to get points really pointy is a chopstick. So what I'll do is I'll actually insert it into the material as such and I'll go right to the point and I will make it pointy. Takes a bit of fiddling around but you know we get there in the end and once I've done that on both sides of the sash what I'll do is I'll whip stitch together uh, the the little opening in the sash. So I'll do that now and then I'll give it a good press and then the sash is done. And there we are. There's that point. And now back to the bodice. It was as simple as pinning and sewing all the pieces together. So what I'm doing here is that I'm pinning the piping directly onto the main fabric. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to repin it all by sandwiching in the lining as such, like that. And then what I'll do is I'll sew along it at the one and a half centimetre point and hopefully that will create a really nice hem at the very top of the bodice. So let's do that now. So a quick update to show you how it's progressing and what it looks like midway through. So I've got the bodice now all together. So I've got the lining on the inside. I've understitched the piping. So the piping is in between the main fabric and the lining. And that's looking all pretty good. Then what I've gone ahead and on the back piece, I've slashed open the fabric and I've applied a um, placket. It's called a placket by the uh, pattern piece. Okay then, sure, we'll say that. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to sew this back piece to the skirt front piece, and then after that I will attach it to the bodice. And then the base of the dress is all complete. I'll just need to add the sleeves and the cuffs, but I'll check in with you then. So what I've got here is I've got my bodice, I've marked out the center point in the front and I've put two little gathering stitches along the base here as per the pattern instructions. 
What I'm going to do now is I'm going to match up the center point of the bodice to the center point of the front of the skirt and then match up the side points to the side points of the skirt. Then I will gather this down so that it's even on both sides, pin that down and then work on the back. The back is a little bit different. The bodice is actually fitted in the back where the skirt will have a lot of pleats. So I will be doing the opposite for the back. Cool, let's do it. So here is my first try on. Now, this is why Regency is a fantastic place to start when doing historical costuming, because you really can't go wrong with it. If you know me, you know I mock up everything. However, for this, no mock up. I just made it as per the pattern. And you know what? It's fitting pretty darn good. Just need to, <laughs> you know, do the hem because I'm five foot four and I short. So got to do that, got to do the, the sleeves, got to do the back closures, but I'm feeling really good. So let's get cracking on. Back into the PJs. I'm moving on to the sleeves here. First I sew them up and then I give them a good press with the iron and make the bias binding. Then it was just a matter of sewing the bias binding to the bottom of the sleeve. So off camera I went ahead and sewed the sleeves in, it was a really really straightforward process, puff sleeves are super easy to put in. Uh, so now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work on creating some buttonholes and then sewing on the buttons so we get the back closure done and then all that will be left will be uh, hemming this bad boy. Too easy, let's do it. So just before I start with creating the buttonholes, I want to show you this. This is a buttonhole foot. Now it comes with most standard sewing machines, I think now. They're really, really easy to use and they're absolutely fabulous. All you do is you pull down on the bottom part to create a little channel that you put your button in as so, and then you lock it into place, and then you attach this foot to your machine, set it to the button foot, uh, the buttonhole foot setting and then just sew a perfect sized buttonhole for you. Okay, so now that I've got the buttonholes all sewn in, what we need to do now is we need to open up the buttonholes. To do that, what I like to do is I actually like to put a little pin at either end of the buttonhole stitch, like so, and then get my quick unpick and pierce it using the quick unpick. And that way, what that means is that we don't go past the point of the last thread. And we just do that really, really carefully so we don't catch any of the sewing threads. There we go, like that. And it's just a case of taking out the pins and you've got your buttonhole, all good to go. So I'm gonna do that with the other ones and then I'll sew buttons on the other side. last thing to do for the dress was to do up the hem. So with the dress complete, 
I am a sucker for punishment and I'm going to make a reticule um, using this pattern which is by the amazing cluster frock uh, I saw her make it and I really really liked the end product and I thought it would go well with this I've got some leftover scrap fabric uh, from the dress so basically the last of the quilt cover and also the pillowcase so I'm going to do that as well for the reticule, I cut out a total of six petals, which consisted of both an outer fabric and a lining fabric. Each petal was pinned and sewed together individually, before being sewn all together by hand afterwards. At the end of it all, I used some of the gold rope for the tie. To see the real tutorial of how this bag comes together, please go over to Cluster Frox's page and watch the video there. I'll link it below. for my final thoughts on this project. In short, I really, really like it. And it just goes to prove that to get into costuming, you don't have to spend a whole lot of money, you don't have to make it super complicated, and it doesn't have to take a long time. If you're just getting into costuming, start small or start easy. Why Regency is a good place to start for historical costuming is because you don't really need any kind of really special undergarments as such. It would be good if you have a shift, but I don't even have that. I'm just wearing a bra and undies underneath this. It's fine. Oh, I'm gonna get roasted in the comments. I can feel it. I do want to give a very special shout out to Clusterfrock, who designed the pattern for this bag. I mentioned in my video earlier on, it's really, really lovely. It's a little small, but it's really cute. So if I was to wear this out, I would take this along. I might have to leave my, uh, my, my phone at home, but other than that, I can put some money in here. So I guess all that's left for me to do is try and find some kind of ball to go to. <sighs> Living in Western Australia sometimes has its downsides. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please make sure you hit that like button, hit subscribe, leave me a comment and all that good stuff. I'll see you all next time. Bye. I do want to give out a special shank the, 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 the shank out. I do want to give a special shout oh, oh my god, I can't talk. I do want to give a very special <laughs> We're going on a little bit of a, a little Alright. Maybe I'll just make a ball. Yeah. Let's do that.